does summertime mean to you? To me, it means doing everything I possibly can outdoors, and that includes cooking outdoors. I love to cook on a grill, and when I grill, I love to have some bottles of spice mix nearby. I thought it would be fun to use supplies from the Stars and Stripes Create Along box to decorate a spice bottle. The first thing you need is a bottle, and this is just one that had something in it I used up. If it has a metal lid, we can decorate that. If it's plastic, you don't want to put that in the oven. And of course, you don't want to bake this. So make sure you take this off, save it for later, and then we can decorate this with our polymer clay. You'll need to choose a color palette, and unpredictably, I'm actually going with the obvious red, white, and blue here. You can do any colors you want, but yeah, I don't usually go with the obvious. What I have is an entire pack of Primo Sculpey Red Glitter and also Primo Sculpey Pearl. You want to roll these out somewhere around the second thickest setting of your pasta machine. That's a number two on my Atlas, which is about 2.3 millimeters thick. If you've ever wondered what you get from a two ounce package of polymer clay, it's about this much, 2.3 millimeters thick, rolled out to not quite six inches square, maybe a little bit extra, or enough to use uh, your average size silk screen or stencil. So this is the Stars and Stripes stencil that came from Create Along. You wanna put these slick side down Move this off to the side for a while. And you don't need to press hard, but you can just kind of rub over it with a roller or your fingers to make sure that it's well adhered. And I have here some sapphire blue metallic paint. I also have here a new tool to me for silk screening. This is a squeegee that I got from Create Along, and I absolutely love it. You just add a line of paint at one end of your silk screen. And then you can, and if you don't have the squeegee, that's fine. I always just used a card, like an old gift card or credit card. And this just glides like butter. It really works nicely. Should have left that open because that excess paint can just go right in there. And you, you really actually use very little in a silk screen. And let's see what we got. Well, that's pretty cool. Let's set that aside to dry. This needs to go right into water so the paint doesn't dry in there. For this one, I've got the Stars and Stripes stencil. I love these kind of wavy psychedelic shapes. They're so cool. I can think of so many uses beyond, well, the obvious today is like thinking of waving uh, flag stripes, but yeah, it's just a really cool design. Again, lightly roll over with your acrylic roller just so that it's stuck down and paint isn't going to seep underneath. And I have a little bit of sea sponge. I've just moistened this in some water and wrung it out. And a bit of white paint. I mean, you could brush on paint, you could do whatever you want, but I kind of like the look here of the sponge on paint. Be careful, especially if this is damp, that you don't squish too hard thinking that maybe there's areas you're missing and you're going to squish really hard to cover those areas because what inevitably will happen is that at that point some of the moisture will seep out and you'll end up with areas where the paint goes under the stencil. It's always surprising to me when I lift up a stencil and see how much coverage I got because when you look at it like this you're certain you're missing areas or it just doesn't look as good. All right, and the big reveal. Oh, cool. So we'll wash the stencil and let both of these dry completely. My paint is dry, but before we move on to using these, there's an issue we need to address. You might notice that unless you have a very small jar, there is an issue that neither of these decorated sheets are long enough to wrap completely around the bottle. Well, what to do? I have a really cool hack for you. As long as you don't mind a little bit of crackling in your paint and maybe the teeny tiniest bit of distortion in your design, you can take this sheet that was rolled out on a number two setting, the second thickest, and roll it down to a thinner setting. 
Make sure your paint is completely dry and then send it through short end first. Here it is. As I mentioned, there's a little bit of distortion because the stars are stretched, but I don't mind that. And on this one, it's not going to make hardly any difference at all. Here we are with both sheets long enough to wrap around my bottle. What we're going to do is just do some simple strips. One of the things I hate about bottles of seasoning mix is when the label covers the bottle so completely that not only can you not tell what's in there, you can't see how much you have left. So we're not going to do that. We're just going to do some strips around the center and decoration, but we'll still be able to plainly see what's in there. I did a little testing. This is a slightly bigger bottle, but I decided that I'm going to do this opposite. I really like this wavy design and I didn't like chopping it up so much. So I'm going to put the red one in the middle and the blue on the outsides, but I thought you might like to see, and that's where we're going with this, I thought you might like to see an alternate way of doing it. One of these rulers, it's a quilting ruler. I absolutely adore it for polymer clay. I use it for so many things. This is an inch wide, which is perfect because I'm going to cut that center strip an inch wide. So you just lay it down. Now the trick you need to remember is to walk your fingers and follow the ruler. Otherwise the ruler can skid and then you end up with a crooked line. So just put slight pressure and because I'm cutting an inch wide, I can do the same on the other side. Just make sure you have nothing important, no fingernails or fingertips hanging over the edge of the ruler. Oh, didn't do that very well. There we go. And there's that strip. I'll just center it. I suppose you could cut skinny strips. You could put them on like zigzaggy in waves. That would be sort of fun. And I'm just going to make a, a seam here at the center. You saw on that sample we're going to put stars where the seam is so we don't have to worry about making it perfect. because all this clay right here is going to go away. Cut that off and not even worry about it. This one's pretty straight, but if it went askew, just use the back of your blade to straighten things out. Just be careful, because you're holding the sharp side. So there's that. Now we'll cut our blue star strips. Cut one clean edge, and this ruler has markings on it that help you cut into eighths, which is great because I decided that I thought three eighths was a perfect width to go on either side of those red stripes. Polymer does kind of eat away some of the lines. There were black lines on here uh, in between and they're kind of all gone, but there are still other markings. So I've used this for years with polymer. When I can't see any of the lines anymore, I'll just buy another one. Now this can be tricky because it's leaning kind of on and off. So this is where you really want to get your fingertips on there. Don't press hard or you won't be able to take it off, but just enough. Again, making sure nothing important is hanging over. Just holding it in place and moving slowly and carefully. And I'm just going to walk my fingers down to finish the cut. If you handle the strips gently as you're doing this, you shouldn't end up with any distortion. But if you have to roll it down very, very thin in order to get it to fit around your container, then you might have issues and you might consider, instead of rolling it too thin, just have two seams. So find a way to put a decoration like this on two areas. And I'll repeat to add my other strip. And there's a, you probably can't see it, but I can see the, a little daylight through this strip. So again, just the blunt side of my clay blade. Just tap that down in place so it's all meeting. And repeat to add your third strip on the other side. So here it is with the three stripes. Of course, you could keep going, do any configuration you like. But now for covering up that seam and adding a decoration to the front, 
this part with the seam is going to be the front. You can do this one of two ways. You can take a star cutter and actually cut out this section and inset it into there. So that's what I did here. This star is inset in there. I don't know if you can see it from the other side. So you see the back of the black clay that I used for the star. Or you can just place it on top. So I decided to do that and I just took my roller and made sure this area was smooth because it is going to show from the other side if it's not full of your spice mix. This is some black clay that I rolled out on my thickest setting and then just embossed with the Falling Stars silicone stamp. That came in the Stars and Stripes box. And I'm going to cut out the largest star cutter. And Create Along has redone something with their creating of cutters. And they are so nice and sharp now. It's really a joy to use them. Just the tiniest bit of cleaning up, which is going to be necessary with any cutter because it has some thickness. I'm just going to add some gold mica powder to this to bring out those stars. Notice I'm tapping off my finger. Yeah, and I'm making a mess. <laughs> tapping off my finger before I apply it. That's so I don't have too much. And since the edges are going to be exposed, I think I'll add some powder to those too. Now I'm going to clean up my fingers before I handle my jar. Find the side with my seam and strategically position my star so it covers it. And then you can add more stars for decoration like I did here. For this one, I put my Stars and Stripes stencil on some more of that red clay and then rolled over it pretty firmly with the acrylic roller because what I'm doing here now is I'm using it as a texture rather than as a stencil. So when you peel it up, you have that design and then I just went over it with some pearl mica powder. And for this last little star, remember all this leftover clay here? Well, you can save this for another project, but if you want to just mix it up, it's going to come out something like this. It's just the blue paint will mix in and tint it a really pretty light blue shade, and you can use that in other projects. In fact, that red that I used had already had white stenciled on it, and I mixed it in and rolled it out again, and it's perfectly fine. So I rolled that out on the thickest setting of my pasta machine. Then I brought back that same blue paint and sponged it on and so it looks something like this. And you can arrange these however you like. If you want to be very concentric, you can just overlap them so there's an even border like that. You could do like a shooting star kind of thing. You could just kind of freeform it is sort of what I like. So whatever you want, position those on there. Now if you have a plastic cap like this one, you don't want to bake that. And if you have a metal cap and you have writing on it, some rubbing alcohol might remove the writing. It did on this one. But this still is not the right color, so let me show you how to cover that with clay. For whatever color of clay you're going to use, roll it out again on a number two, second thickest. You don't want it too thick here. And then just determine what diameter of circle you need. So you just roll this up on one side and make a mark on the other side. And now the distance between those two marks is slightly bigger than the circle you need to cut out. So I've got this one. For this one and three quarter inch cap, I think I needed like a two and a quarter inch circle. And then start from the center out and then attempt to not trap much air. And see, by making it thin and not too big, it's easy to tuck that edge right with the lip of the metal cap. If you have a different style of cap, you might have to figure out how to do it. But this works pretty well for this one. And you can kind of squish it down so it all just meets that edge. Now you can use the star stamp. I'm going to put this down and get this on here and make sure I have it well centered. You might want to use a release with this one because it's not silicone and it may stick. And then finally, to make those edges a little bit nicer, I'm going to use the 
Falling Stars stamp again and just kind of wrap it around and squeeze and I'm not trying to make it perfect but it just it's kind of giving it a little a little something there and now you can put mica powder on that I'll do gold since I already have black and gold on here and then bake and fill with your favorite spice or herb sprinkle. I'll put a recipe at the end of this video for one of my favorites. So once again for Create Along, this is Sandy Huntress wishing you happy creating.